Hello, welcome to another Cafe Imports education video. Today, we're going to discuss the relationships and concepts of taste and seed. Taste, as I've mentioned in other videos, is very personal and can be very subjective. However, as we are narrowing into the flavors we are looking to explore in the seed, we need to be mindful of objective flavors, what they mean, and why they're there. Learning how to taste is a big challenge, and one that is not to be undertaken alone. In fact, it would be nearly impossible for me to teach you what certain flavors are through a camera without requiring us to be at least tasting the same thing together through the magic of time and space travel. You really just need to get out there and taste with some other coffee professionals that are already calibrated to something like an industry standard. This is some of the work that Coffee Quality Institute does, especially for aspiring tasters, and the reason we have the Coffee Tasters Lexicon, which is made in collaboration with the Coffee Quality Institute and World Coffee Research, along with the Specialty Coffee Association. Um, there are some universities to pitch in too, Texas A&M, Kansas State University. In other words, there are a lot of resources from which we can learn to taste. Learning how to taste coffee is a lot like learning colors. Unless an individual has a visual impairment, it's very likely that we all see the same colors. However, until someone tells us what a specific color is called, we are not able to name the color when we see it again. There's a multitude of colors as the more primary and basic colors bleed into each other and create even more nuanced differences. However, as we are beginning the learning process, red is red and all of the variations within that fairly wide spectrum of red is also red. It takes time, language development, and typically conversation to learn what the names of different shades are called and we may never have the correct name for all of them. Flavor experiences operate in much the same way. The first time I tasted chocolate, I didn't know it was called chocolate. I could taste the flavor of it just like everyone else. However, it took someone telling me that it was the flavor I was tasting and it was indeed chocolate for me to be able to add that flavor to my personal lexicon, my personal memory bank. Further complicating this, what one person recalls as the flavor of chocolate may not be the same thing as what someone else recalls as the flavor of chocolate. If my first experience with chocolate was a super sweet, super milky confection, and someone else has only had artisan chocolate with very little sugar, we are definitely not going to be calibrated. These are great examples that show why tasting together is so important. We not only need to learn the names of certain flavors, but also what our co-tasters call certain flavors as well. We need to not only know what a specific flavor is in a coffee and why it's there, but also to have an in-tune understanding of our own palate. When a roaster explores the flavors of a new coffee, what intrinsic flavors a coffee offers, they are really exploring their options, trying to figure out the types of characteristics that the coffee offers. So by looking at a new coffee at a different roast profile, Maybe even through different brewing methods, a roaster can get a good idea of what flavors to anticipate and begin that process of shaping their interpretation of the coffee, preparing the version of that coffee that they will eventually present to a guest. A coffee is limited in what kind of flavor each coffee can offer. Each coffee only contains what it contains. If a certain flavor is not intrinsic to a coffee, there's no way that a roaster can create that flavor. It can be roasted a hundred different ways and that hoped for flavor will just still not show up. It's just simply not there. Our first step to discovering what flavors are potentially in the coffee is to understand more about the coffee itself. There are three major things we point to as flavor contributors, variety, terroir, and processing. I like to think of these three variables as a relational matrix of sorts. The variety of a coffee is what genetically controls how a coffee will grow, and thus what specific compounds that coffee creates within the cellular structure. <laughs> I 
I mean, it, it actually even determines the cellular structure itself. Think of the genetic makeup of a coffee kind of like the hardware in a computer. The plant is hardwired to respond to its environment in very specific ways. If a certain chemical is brought into the plant, the plant will process that chemical in a specific way based on how genetics have wired it to respond to that chemical. The genetic makeup of the coffee plant is a precondition as to how the plant will assemble photosynthates and other compounds, and thus ultimately what potential end flavors a certain variety of coffee is capable of creating. Coffee is unique in that the range of potential flavors is huge. On the other hand, the environment the coffee plant grows within, the choices that the growers, the processors are all making, they're all inflicting that upon the plant, those are like software. These are inputs of chemicals, photosynthates, nutrients, and so on. Those are the things that the hardware needs to then process and turn into other products. The manner in which the plant's internal makeup corresponds with the external forces will work together to determine the compounds within an individual seed, and thus what potential flavors that seed can offer to a roaster. All that to say, if a coffee naturally tastes like peanuts and rubber, is not sweet, lacks acidity and body, there's no roaster in the world who can roast that coffee to taste floral, bright, sugary, and rich. That is what flavored syrup and milk is for. A roaster can, however, make that coffee taste like charcoal. A roaster can also take that floral, bright, sugary, rich coffee and make it taste like charcoal. Understanding what flavors are uniquely present in a unique coffee is step one to helping hone in on those flavors in a desired outcome. There is a great quote by the master artist Michelangelo concerning his work, in particular the famous work, The Stone Carving of David. I saw the angel in the marble, and I carved until I set him free. Every block of stone has a statue inside it, and it is the task of the sculptor to discover it. Clearly, this is a bit romantic, but I believe it to be at least partly true for coffee. There is flavor potential waiting to be discovered in every seed. A roaster uses heat to carve away at the flavors that are undesirable in an effort to reveal those intrinsic and waiting for daylight. The carver must also inflict their will into the process. Some roasters would disagree with this premise, that the goal is only to reveal the intrinsic nature of a coffee. To that I say, until you know the limits that the coffee you have in front of you possesses, you won't fully know how to bend the roast of that coffee to meet your particular flavor goals. Discovery is step one, toward control. For this discovery, a roaster must know how their coffee tastes and how it can potentially taste.